Welcome back to my channel. I am Longevity Forever Young, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. July 25th, 2024. I have a nice video for you today about plyometrics and motor units. Mostly, plyometrics are done for sports. How to get faster, quicker for sports. When they were created, this is what they're created for. However, however, big deal. Specific plyometrics have been shown in a scientific study that they can activate and help you retain fast motor units. Fast motor units are connected to your fast type 2X muscle fibers. We all lose these. It's inevitable. It cannot be stopped. No one is spared. Therefore, I want to show you the exercises according to the study, which are the best to recruit fast motor units in your quadricep muscle. I'm going to show you the exercises. Then I'm going to explain to you who can't do these and who can? How many times you do them a week? How long the session should last? How many times your feet should touch the floor when you're doing these exercises? Then I'm going to explain to you how motor units are connected to aging. That no matter what you do, if you don't slow down the loss of these fast motor units, you're going to age like a normal person, no matter how good you eat, no matter what supplement you take, no matter anything. If you cannot slow these down, no one tells you this. Well, I'm sharing this with you because it's going to help you. Okay, I'm going to show you the exercises. Some of them are a little more difficult and some of them are easier. There's a certain amount of times you could do these. And anybody can do them under certain circumstances. I will explain all this. And I will back everything up, I say, with scientific studies. So let's get into the exercises and then I'll continue on a different segment to explain everything else. Let's get going. According to the study, they experimented, they concluded that the best plyometric exercise to recruit the most motor units, not the most for power and speed in sports, for motor unit recruitment. This, this helps slow down the motor units, was cone hops. 15.24 centimeter cone hops, which is equivalent to six inches in the United States. I don't have any cones, so I use toilet paper which is about the same thing, about six inches. So let's get going. These are fairly easy. Anyone should be able to do these specific exercises, which is rank number one. So no excuses. Let's go to the next exercise. Number two on the list for the study is 24 inch box jump. I can't find a 24 inch. This is 30 inches. So I'm going to do it with this. But 24 inch box jumps will break number two at recruiting fast motor units in your quads. Okay, that was rank number two, motor units in the quads. Let's go to number three. Number three on the list for best motor recruitment and activation is the tuck and jump. So I'm going to show it to you. Tuck and jump, you jump up, your knees got to touch your chest. If you can't touch your chest, don't worry about it. Just do as, as far as you can. But the objective is to jump up and touch your chest, okay? Like that. I'll do it sideways so you can see this, okay? One, two, three, four, five. That's right number three for the most motor unit recruitment. Let's go to the next exercise, number four. Number four is called Double leg vertical jump and reach. Okay, and this is a fairly easy exercise, so there is no excuses. Even the people that can't do these should do this one. Okay, double leg jump and reach. It's not hard. Three, four, five. Just do 
five reps. This is a fairly easy exercise, but it's ranked number four on the list. Let's go to number five. The next exercise, which is ranked number five for motor recruitment in your quadriceps, is called squat and jump with 30% of your max that you could do one rep of squats, okay? You gotta find out. These are 40 pound dumbbells, so it comes up to 80 pounds, which is about near 300 pound max. I could do more than 300 pounds on the squat, but I don't have any of the dumbbells, so I'm showing you the 40. It's not a written rule, but this is what the study found. 30% of your one rep max. Okay, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna demonstrate it. I'm gonna do five reps, you don't need to do more. Okay, that was number five. I'm gonna do the next one on the list. It's called ankle hops. Let's get going. Very simple. Two legs, you just hop. You could do them sideways, backwards. Those are called ankle hops. Those are ranked number six. This is number seven on the list. It's called a pipe jump. This is a little more difficult for people, but you don't have to strain your legs all the way out. I'm gonna show you what I mean. You could keep them bent to make it easier to do. So let me show you five reps real quick. I'll show it to you from the front one time, okay? Okay, we'll do it like this. called the pipe jump. That was number seven. Let's go to the next one. Number eight on the list is the single leg vertical jump and reach. It's similar to the double leg vertical jump reach I did earlier, but don't one leg. more difficult to do but that was number eight the next one on the list is number nine it's called the 12 inch depth jump you hop off here and when you land you land on your toes not your heels you land jump up Let me show you Make sure your heels don't touch the ground. As soon as you hit, you jump up. That was back number nine for best recruitment of body units. The last one is the same thing, but 24 inches in height. Rank number 10 is the 24 inch depth jump, like I did earlier with the 12 inch. Can't find a 24 inch box, so I'm using this about 30 inches, so I'm gonna try it. Remember your heels, your heels cannot touch. That was five reps. That's all you need to do. That was rank, that was rank number 10, believe it or not. The best recruitment. Now let's go to the explanation. Have a great day. I'm gonna break down a few things next. Let's go. I just show you plyometric exercises best suited for maintaining the health of motor units according to the study we are discussing. Many people in the comment section ask me, how long should I work out for doing plyometrics and how many times per week? I am going to answer all this and much more. First, we will start with how many jumps we need per session for the best results. The recommendations are 80 to 100 foot contacts per session for beginners, 
and up to 140 for more advanced athletes in plyometric training, and it is supported by numerous studies. According to this specific study right here by W.P. Evan, previous training volume recommendations for beginners include 80 to 100 foot contacts per session, while intermediate and advanced participants are recommended 100 to 120 and 120 to 140 foot contacts, respectively. The participants in this study performed the following number of floor contacts per session. The low volume, LV group, performed 75 to 100 foot contacts per session in the first two weeks, then 90, 80, 70, and 60 foot contacts per session in the subsequent weeks. The high volume, HV, group performed exactly twice as many foot contacts as the LV group, which means 150 to 200 foot contacts per session in the first two weeks, then 180, 160, 140, 120 foot contacts per session in the subsequent weeks. They did this twice per week. The good news is that this study found that low volume plyometric training program are just as effective as the high volume ones. Therefore, low volume programs are more time efficient and just as effective. That is, you can do 75 to 100 foot contacts per week. In yet another study from Pace University, which also confirms the same numbers above, they also mentioned that the volume of plyometric training should be adjusted for an athlete's body weight. For example, a 250-pound athlete should do 40 to 50% less volume than someone that weighs 150 pounds because it's, they, have, they, they have more weight and it, it would affect their bones. To sum it up, this is what is recommended. Beginner, no more than 80 to 100 foot contacts per session. Intermediate, no more than 100 to 120 foot contacts per session. Advanced, no more than 120 to 140 foot contacts per session. Let me clarify what foot contacts is. When you jump up and your feet touch the floor, that counts as one contact, so you know. All you can do is 80 of those. You could even do one exercise. If you can't do the other ones, if you're unable to, just get the easiest one and do those for 80 times, twice per week. Or you can mix it up, do 10, 10, and 10. You figure it out, but you need to do it at least 80 to 100 for the best benefits. And one other thing I want to say, the recommended rest period between plyometric workouts is 48 to 72 hours. This is very important. You don't want to overtrain and you don't want to hurt yourself. I want to speak to you about certain tests and criteria you need to meet before starting plyometric exercises. This is very important. Let me explain, okay? The following rules are not written in stone, but they are criteria that have been suggested before starting plyometrics. They are, see on the screen there, okay? We'll start from the beginning. I reword this, okay? Pain. You should not have any pain in your lower body. Range of motion. All your joints should be able to move throughout their full range of motion without any restrictions. Next one, swelling. There should be no swelling in your joints or muscles. The next one, balance with the eyes open. You should be able to balance on one leg for 30 seconds with your eyes open. The next one, balance with your eyes closed. You should also be able to balance on one leg for 30 seconds with your eyes closed. Next one, muscle strength. There should be no more than a 20% difference in strength between your left leg and your right leg. Muscle endurance. Similarly, there should be no more than 20% difference in endurance between your left leg and your right leg. Now, neuromuscular control. Your movements should be smooth and controlled without any awkward or compensatory movements. The next one, single leg half squat. You should be able to do a half a squat on one leg without pain and with good form. The next one, free weight squat. You should be able to squat with a weight that is 1.5 times to 2.5 times your body weight with good form and no pain. The next one, squat. 60% of your body mass, you should be able to squat 60% of your body weight five times within five seconds, maintaining good form and with no pain. What does this mean? It means a person that weighs 200 pounds, he should take 120 pounds and do five quick reps in good form with no pain. Next one, lower level plyometric drills. You should be able to perform basic plyometric exercises like small small jumps or hops 
without pain and in good form. However, I must emphasize, if someone does not meet some of these criteria, they can still do low impact plyometrics that place less stress on the joints and muscles, such as low box jumps, 16 inch corn hops, ankle hops, and the double leg vertical jump and reach that I showed in my videos. Okay, as you can see, I have discussed a study showing the best plyometric exercise to help recruit the most motor units. But why are these motor units so important in healthy aging? And how can slowing down the inevitable losses help us live longer and healthier? Let's discuss this. First, what is a motor unit? A motor unit is like a team working together to make a muscle move. It consists of one motor neuron, a nerve cell that sends signals from the brain or spinal cord. And the next one has to be muscle fibers involved, the muscle cells that respond to the motor neuron signal. I just drew a design, and I'm going to break this down with an analogy, okay, what a motor unit is. I've made a design of a motor unit, okay, so I'm going to explain to you, this is basic, there's a lot more to this, but this is the basic explanation. You see the upper left corner here, where you, you see your brain. Your brain gets a message to contract the muscles. So what, what exactly happens here? That message is called an action potential. It's like the message that starts in your brain or spinal cord. Okay, here's an analogy. Okay, imagine your brain is sending a text message to begin with. Okay, this message travels to the motor neuron. You see the blue shape with the tentacle sticking out all over the place up top? Motor neuron. This is the nerve cell of the motor unit. Okay, think of the motor neuron as a phone line carrying the text message. Next, from the motor neuron, this message travels down the long part of the neuron called the axon. That's the yellow light cable. You see it right there? Okay. The analogy is the axon is like a long cable of the phone line stretching from your brain or spinal cord to your muscle fibers. Then it travels down and it reaches the neuromuscular junction. See the straight line that's the end right there that's the end of the motor neuron where it meets the muscle fibers at the neuromuscular junction that's where the no motor neuron contacts your muscle fibers the analogy is this is like a message arriving at the phone receiver near the muscle then next comes the muscle contraction what happens the message the action potential triggers the muscle to contract the analogy is like like a phone receiver ringing and making the muscle move. It's like a doorbell making someone open the door. In summary, your brain sends a message down a nerve line called the motor neuron through the long cable, the yellow part there, the axon, to the receiver, the neuromuscular junction near the muscle fibers, causing the muscle to contract. Before I end here, it is very important that you remember this. You see those blue light -like tentacles attached to the muscle fibers? I need you to remember this because I'm going to speak. This is very, extremely important for this video. And I need you to remember these tentacles attaching to the muscle fibers. By age 75, it is common to lose about 50% of these motor units. Here's what happens to our body because of these losses. Number one, reduce muscle mass and strength and power. Motor units help maintain muscle size, muscle strength, and muscle power. Losing half of these leads to a significant decrease in muscle mass, making our muscles smaller and weaker. This makes lifting heavy objects and performing daily activities more difficult. The next one, slower movements. As motor units decrease, muscle contractions become less efficient. Movements become slower and less precise affecting tasks like walking, climbing stairs, and even gripping objects. Now, here's where I disagree with Mr. Peter Atia. He says, if you measure your grip, grip strength, that means you're going to live a long life. Not true. You could have a fast motor units. You have fast motor units in your whole body. Just because you've got a strong grip, it does not mean the rest of the fast motor units are healthy. Therefore, you're still going to age like any average person.
It doesn't matter how strong your grip is. You still are going to get age-related diseases. The next one is increased fatigue. Muscles begin to tire more quickly because there are fewer motor units to share the workload. This means activities that were once easy may not cause quicker exhaustion. The next one, this is a very important one, impaired balance and coordination. Reduce muscle control and strength. Increase the risk of falls and injuries. This is how old people fall. Balance and coordination suffer, making it harder to stay steady on your feet. The next one is compensatory mechanism. What do I mean by that? I need to stop for a second. I ask you to remember those blue tentacles. Please, you must remember them because they pertain to compensatory mechanisms. The body tries to adapt by having the remaining motor units take over the tasks of the lost ones. But this process is limited. It cannot fully restore previous muscle function. Now, let me talk to you about the indirect effects it has on your organs and how it accelerates aging when you lose these motor units. Reduce physical activity. The loss of motor units leads to weaker muscles and reduced mobility. As a result, all the people may become less physically active. Reduced activity can lead to obesity, cardiovascular disease, and metabolic disorders, such as type 2 diabetes. The next one, we'll talk about cardiovascular health. Physical inactivity due to muscle weakness can negatively impact cardiovascular health. Regular exercise is a must for maintaining heart health, and decreased activity can lead to hypertension, sclerosis, and other heart-related issues. The next problem with motor unit losses is bone health. Muscles play a crucial role in maintaining bone density. Weak muscles can lead to a sedentary lifestyle, which reduces the mechanical load on bones, increasing the risk of osteoporosis and fractures. The next one, metabolic disorders. Muscle mass is important for, for glucose metabolism. Reduced muscle mass due to motor unit loss can impair glucose regulation, leading to insulin resistance, and type 2 diabetes. Next one, an important one for longevity, the immune system. Physical activity boosts the immune system. Reduced muscle function and activity can weaken the immune response, making older people more susceptible to infections and illnesses. Here's another one, mental health. Muscle weakness and reduced physical activity can lead to social isolation, depression, and cognitive decline. Regular exercise is known, known to improve mood and cognitive function. It helps your brain. The severe loss of motor units not only weaken muscles, but they also lead to reduced physical activity. This reduction in physical activity has widespread effects on your organs and systems in the body, contributing to multiple age-related diseases and accelerating the aging process. Now let's talk about power exercises like plyometrics and how they are crucial for motor unit health. The sad thing I want to start with is that nothing on this planet can slow down the loss of motor units as we age. Sad to say, not even exercise. Let me explain. Regular exercise, regular intensive exercise, like plyometrics I showed in this video, although may not slow the loss of motor units, they indeed help maintain muscle size and strength and growth of new branches from surviving nerve cells to reconnect with muscle fibers known as axonal sprouting. I asked you to remember those, those tentacles, the blue head tentacles. Now we're going to talk about them. Let me talk to you about these axonal sprouting so you get a clearer picture of why plyometrics and other power movements are extremely crucial for health span and lifespan. What exactly is this of sprouting in aging muscles? It is well known that our muscles consist of type 1, slow twitch muscle fibers, type 2A, fast twitch muscle fibers, and type 2X, fast twitch muscle fibers. Each has its own corresponding motor unit. The loss of fibers and motor units in healthy aging happens to practically all the muscles in our body. All of them, from head to toe. Aging primarily affects the fast, powerful type 2 fast-twitch muscle fibers and the motor neurons connected to them. 
either die or are denervated. In other words, they are separated, the tentacles are separated from the muscle fibers. Now, what does this have to do with axonal sprouting? Axonal sprouting is a compensatory mechanism where surviving motor neurons grow new branches, what's the blue, the, the branches, to re reconnect muscle fibers that have lost their original nerve supply. To compensate for these losses, the remaining healthy motor neurons begin to grow new branches. This growth is what is called sprouting. These new branches then connect to the fast twitch muscle fibers that lost their original nerve supply, helping to maintain function and strength as much as possible. Essentially, it is like the nerves trying to fix broken links within the body to keep muscles working properly. While this transformation helps keep some muscle functions, it also changes the muscle fibers from type 2 fast twitch muscle fibers to type 1 slow twitch muscle fibers that contract more slowly, leaning more towards endurance than quick burst of power. What does this mean? It means this is why this is why all all the people move slower. This is why they can't sprint fast. They can't jump because they fast muscle fibers got denervated, and the ones that got reinnervated turned to type one fibers. The type two that like they had before are not type type one, so they could run long distances. All the people can run long distances, but slow. That's because they have more type one than type two, because they lost those type two. This is where plyometrics and other power movements seem to help the most. Let me explain. During the innovation process, they appear to stop or slow the transformation of type two fast switch fibers into type one slow twitch fibers. This is what plyometrics do. That process, the sprouting process, that turns the type, the type two fibers into one, the plyometrics stop that. This not only extends health span and lifespan, but you will also be able to move more youthfully in older age. In conclusion, I want to emphasize that there is currently no way to completely stop the loss of fast motor units, including to exercise. This is inevitable part of aging. It's part of aging. No supplement, special diet, food, magic herb, Potion can slow the loss of motor units. This is serious. The best approach we have is to maintain the health of our fast motor units and the associated type 2 muscle fibers through intensive exercises like plyometrics. This is why I, I drill these into people. These, these, are, these are the longevity, the best longevity exercises in the world. In my humble opinion, even the great fitness pioneers such as Jack Lane, the name always comes up, overlooks the importance of plyometrics. Yes, yes. And power type exercises that focus on fast motor units activation and recruitment. He didn't do this. Not only him, no one does this. No one. If you are able to do these exercises, I strongly encourage you to include them in your routine. However, please consult with your doctor first to ensure you are fit enough to perform them. Even, even the low impact ones, you must always consult a doctor. The health of your fast motor units is closely linked to your overall health span and lifespan. Incorporating these exercises can potentially help you live longer and remain disease free for a longer period. I hope this information in this video has been helpful. I wish you all the best and hope Stay healthy, everyone. I'll see you soon in my next video.